Hey friends, welcome back to the Life of a Makeup Artist podcast. We are here today with a dear friend, Cyrus, one of my Hi. honeys. We actually met at a beauty event and we just clicked. We and the did. rest is history because you meet a lot of people at events. But no, but I remember this in particular because I was like, who's this beautiful human that now I get to see all the time in New York? But I can't believe that was, when was that? That, I think that was at least two years ago. Y'all, it's been yeah, a minute. Yeah, it's a little fancy. Thank you for brunch. having me. Of I'm course, so glad to be here. Absolutely. Now, Sirius has not only worked in media as a consultant, but also as a creator himself. Mm-hmm. And uh, Len, wait, sorry. Is it okay if I say Yeah, himself? yeah, himself's okay, fine. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, himself. Okay. Thank you for checking okay. me. Yeah. yeah. So. Sirius has not only worked... Sirius has not only worked as a consultant in the beauty industry. It's not only... Sorry. The beauty industry only? Beauty... No. I would say in the... Beauty and marketing. fashion. I would say marketing. Yeah, yeah. Marketing. marketing industry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sirius has not only worked in the marketing industry as a consultant, but now you are a creator yourself yes. and you lend your voice to support queer, trans, and non-binary folks. Yes. And we'll get into all the things, but yes. first, do you mind introducing yourself to your new friends? Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Sirius Vasey. You did my intro proud. I am. I'm <laughs> Sirius Vasey. I am a non-binary creator, a writer, and a speaker. Uh, I used to work on the other side of the industry for six, seven years. Cool. And now I do consulting and I'm a creator. And I just like to fuse beauty, skincare, fashion with a story. So whether it's social justice, whether it's comedy, I do a little bit of everything. I so love that. Me. If you haven't seen <laughs> your, his videos, they're amazing. Okay, but first of all, let's, before we get into all the yes. things, we have a lot to talk about today. How is life? I was just thinking, I was in my kitchen today and I was thinking... Life is right now for me the best it's been. I think I have learned how to let go of the things that I know I just cannot control as much as I try because I'm a Gemini and I really try and do it all. But I but I truly feel at peace right now. And it goes up and down. It fluctuates. But right now, I'm good. How are you? I love that. I can feel it. I can feel the energy. I'm good. I cannot complain. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. Things are always, always up and down. It's always going to be but that way. once you figure out, you know what? I can't control this. No, no. It's the like thing. the algorithm. You can't control it. Babe. No, you can't control it. So let's it. not You can to- try. <laughs> it's not going to work. I mean, you can try as much as you want. It's just I've learned it's not going to work for me. Yeah. It's not. Literally. So I'm feeling good. Yeah. So I saw you looking cute at the Killian party. Wait. Oh my <laughs> God. When? I was upstairs in the cut being all cute in the little Oh my side, God. And I was just like, oh my God. I was only there the for time, like, th- I know, I left. Early. By the time I looked, I was like, you, you left. I've been doing I've been doing early events, getting there early, leaving early, because I love to get there when there's like less people so I can take photos. Yes, this is like my hack as a creator. I do it and then, you know, yeah. get into bed and my skincare is done by 10. Yeah. Latest. Really? Latest. You go to bed at 10? I go to bed. I, well, I'm in bed at 10. I probably go to bed at like 1130. Oh, wow. That's I, have not, I need to prioritize sleep, but that's oh. a whole nother thing. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> Oftentimes, you know, makeup artists or just those that are in creative spaces tend to have parents that not they don't really get it, right? Yeah. They don't get the, their careers. Yeah. And I love how you integrate your family into your yeah. content, which is so hilarious, by yeah. the way. Can you share more of like why that's important to you? Yeah, it's important for a few reasons. I mean, just to give you some back, because I don't know if you know this, but I created, I started to do beauty content because once I got a comment from someone that was like, you're Persian, you're non-binary, you're queer, your parents must be so disappointed in you. And I was like, oh my God, this is the best opportunity for me to like bring them into my content. And that's what I did. And I started to create videos with my dad. And I slowly found that so many people found it important because we're always shown or told that queer people can't have relationships with their Mm -hmm. parents, especially people of color, especially Middle Eastern people. And while I always want to be cognizant of the fact that my relationship with my parents is not normal in the sense that there are a lot of queer people that have a lot of um, issues with their like blood family. I just want to show the representation of the folks who do have it. And also that if you don't have a supportive Baba, you can have mine. Like he's there to share. Like I think it's important for me to have that, especially as I talk about beauty and skincare and all of these things that I'm passionate about because they're so supportive. Right? Was it like that growing up? Yeah, it was crazy. So my parents went to art school. So they're always like surrounded by queer people. And it's not normal. Again, it's not the case for a lot of Iranians. My right. parents just chose that path of creative. And mm-hmm. I, growing up, I knew that I was 
queer and I knew that I felt sort of like gender dysphoric at a very early age. So I came out to my dad when I was eight. Like I came oh. out really early and he was always really supportive. Does that mean that like we didn't have moments where we had to talk through certain issues? No, we we certainly did. Like he's learned a lot. My mom has learned a lot. And I think that's part of the process is even my parents had a lot that they had to like grow right. to understand. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. It took a while. But like also I think part of it too is you can never force someone to learn something. Mm -hmm. They have to be willing to want to. Exactly. Right? Like when a lot of young people reach out to me and they're like, you know, I just came down to my parents and I I don't know if they're going to be supportive because they had a really weird reaction. I'm like, listen, having a reaction and having them internalize it is one thing. Them then projecting it in a way that affects you negatively right. is different. Right. right? Like they may need to learn. They may need to have that time. But – it has to be an active effort. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But you also have to stand in your truth. You do. You can't not. The response. And I think, again, it's like sometimes when people ask me about coming out and I'm like, sometimes people don't have the privilege to come out in their homes and that's okay too. Yeah. You need to just be you. Right. Not at the expense of the other person. It's hard when it's your family. But right. I think this concept of chosen family is so important now, especially for those circumstances. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. So like that person that left that comment on your yeah. video. Oh, yeah. I know you are not afraid of a clapback. No. Okay? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> now, I feel like we've all been subjected to some kind of like troll or just somebody that's simply so rude online. Right? Yeah. Like, how did you build that confidence? Because sometimes, you know, we're putting ourselves out here as artists, as creators, and it's yeah. just like somebody's always going to have something to say. I always. Of always. No matter what you do, <laughs> someone is going to have something to say. It took time. People yeah. ask me all the time, how are you so confident? How do you do? First of all, I'm not like this every day, right. right? Like I have my bad days, but this is how I describe it. I've been on social media for eight years. I haven't been doing content creation for eight years, right. but I've been subjected to this sort of violence for a very long time and right. throughout my life. So I've almost become numb to it. And right. what I've realized is a few things. One, when I was younger, people used to comment things and it would not only affect me, but it would impact me. Right. Meaning like impact, I would take down the photo or I would look in the mirror and be like, wait, maybe what there's now, I mean, I get hundreds of negative comments a day. It affects me, but it doesn't impact me. Like right. I don't make a decision based off of what other people say. Right. And I think that's the thing too, is I'm like, you're, what you're saying is you're not identifying my trauma. Right. You're just revealing your own. This has that. nothing to do with me. Yeah. And that's the thing too is you have to be comfortable in your own skin. Otherwise, I don't know if you can withstand all that negativity. I think yeah. being in the industry that we're in, we get such scrutiny that like at the end of the day, I I actually get – more hurt when people don't like like my makeup look or they're like, right. you know what I mean? I'm like, like oh um, my God, it's so much more personal. Right. Like, so I think for me, the negativity is, 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 doesn't exist. Like it's right. not, if, if it's like, I, this is, you can't tell me this is red when right. it's black. Like right. I know how I feel. Right. You know? I feel like it's a thing where it's, it's like, I didn't give you permission to, no. and I, you don't have permission no. because you don't have don't permission to it. hurt me. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like the thing is, is, you can, you can, something can affect you without you, again, making a decision to change something. I right. think that's different. We're human, right? Yeah. Like I've never been like, oh, like I never get it. Like, no, I, I do. Like when you see that much negativity, it affects you. But I think all you have to remember is why am I doing this? Right. Like, why am I doing this? And then that sort of resets me back yeah. to where I need to be. Yeah. So I am really big on affirmations. Oh, yeah. And I, I... <laughs> I was doing some re research and I saw that you have this video shouting affirmations. Oh my gosh. Ash <laughs> yeah, and I, I don't you. think we have, I, did, I didn't think we have met then, but tell me about this. Like, tell me oh about this video. Oh my God, it was video. so much fun. So I, I think Ashley and I just connected on TikTok or Instagram mm -hmm. and her and her team were like, we should just go and do affirmations in public to people. And I was like, absolutely. I found so much support during the pandemic for people that I could uplift. And I was like, why not do this in person? So we just walked around in Dumbo and literally like shouted affirmations at people. And it was so <laughs> like, some people were just sort of like perplexed, which I understood, but a lot of people were really into it. And it was fun. And we got to talk about everything from, you know, like, my affirmations towards like if you just got dumped or if right. you're going through a breakup or if you're having, you know, body positivity issues mm -hmm. or whatever it was, I think we had a really good time just 
uplifting people. And I will never get over how hilarious it is to people who see people's like interactions and reactions when you do something in public. Right. Because like I was nervous too. Like right. going up to people was very nerve wracking. But Ashley is the Especially sweetest. in New York. They're like, oh my God, I know 100%. Get out of my face. But it was like, we were in Dumbo. So it was a lot of tourists yeah. and Ashley is so wonderful. And I feel like she could just make anyone feel happy. So it was so fun. But I do that on my page. I do it on my TikTok all right. the time. Can you shout your new friends affirmation? <laughs> um, I am focused and nothing's going to get my way this week. I'm not going to say anything negative about myself this week. Simple. That's it. You have one, one, one thing to do this week. It's to not say anything negative about yourself. That's it. I love that. Can I be selfish? Yeah. I want one for me. <laughs> Everything that I have worked for, I have earned. That's your affirmation. Everything you. you have worked for, you have earned. Thank you. It is. I mean, all the little things we were just talking about. I know. It's true. Thank you. I always remind myself that whenever I feel down, That's I've true. earned everything that I have done. Okay. So sometimes you're in spaces where you're like… Yeah. Imposter syndrome too. Yeah. It's so real. I mean, I experience that all the time now and I'm like, no, I, no, I, I deserve to be in this room or right. I deserve to be at this event or I deserve to have this campaign. You know, I yeah. think it's just constantly reminding myself that I deserve these things. Absolutely. So… Now you've done your fair share of collaborations yeah. and, you know, as a consultant, you've seen the ins and outs of it, right? Yeah. And you've learned so much. Yeah. What advice would you give to those wanting to work with more brands, mm -hmm. especially the luxury ones? You know, when I started out, I was on the other side of the industry. So I was agency and I worked with brands. So I got really familiar with understanding clients. Mm -hmm. I knew what they liked. I knew what they liked seeing on social media. I knew what they didn't like seeing on social media. So then when I was in the shoes to be a creator, I sort of had that advantage of understanding. Right. So I would say, you know, never say no to an experience because you don't think it'll be your end goal. I started to work at an agency. It's not something that I thought I would do forever, but it mm -hmm. gave me so much experience into the industry and I'm so grateful for it. And then as a creator from that perspective, you know, I tag the brands that you want to work with. Be bold. Like right. slide into DMs. It's funny because there's brands now that I work with that if I go up in my history of DMs, I You're see like, that I, I'm like, oh my God. Like I used to DM them all the time. I think no, they don't see it. They see no, it. they see it. And then also mm -hmm. now, you know, I've had a couple brands that'll DM me first and be like, hey, like we'd love to either work with you or we'd love to gift you. And then with those brands, I'll look up in our DMs and I'll be like, I hit you up like two years ago when I was small. But I mean, you know what I mean? But right. it's just, so it's full well, circle. What do you say though? I will, people are like. Uh, I, I, well, I always say, you know, just email me. I'd love to work. I, I'm just like, I'm going to pretend it doesn't happen. Or, you know, some of these big brands, they like don't see like if you unsend something. Right. So once in a while, I unsend. But my advice to creators is one, like continue to post about the things that you want to do. Mm -hmm. With manifestation, it has to come to life through practice. You have to do it. So, Post consistently if you mm -hmm. really want. With luxury, never take things personally. The right. luxury world is really difficult to navigate. It's a wonderful world as a creator. I'm so lucky I work with luxury brands, but you're going to get a lot of no's as I have, Yeah. especially if you're a person of color, especially if you're queer or trans, especially if you're a woman of color. Yes. It's so difficult to, to pave your way into those spaces and sometimes it's just really political and that has nothing to do with you. Right. But I will say, again, from what I said before, remind yourself why you're doing it. Right. And I think that is a really, that's the best piece of advice that I've ever gotten as a creator because at one point I was talking to someone who was a creator that asked me for advice and they were like, you know, I want to get, I want to hit like a hundred thousand followers. I want to make this much money. And I'm like, what, like, why are you doing what you want to do though? Mm -hmm. Right? Like for me, influencer is my job. It's what right. I do for work. It's how I make money, but speaking, writing, mm -hmm. representing people, storytelling, like that's what I do. Right. right. So it's like, I always tell people before you start this journey, my best piece of advice is to figure out why you're doing yeah. it. Yeah. What are you doing yeah. and why? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I really, um, I really love that. And I specifically asked you about luxury brands too, because sometimes people would ask me and I'm just like, you know, 
you might go on this brand's page and the demographic might not be as 100%. diverse. 100%. And then if you do, it's like, oh, well, we already checked that box. So we're yeah, good. So it is. Some, I, th- I feel like, honestly, it's like fashion. If you didn't get booked for the shoot, it's yeah. not, it's just, it's just politics. I have it to is say, it is. I'm lucky enough that I, so I, I occupy a lot of beauty and skincare and I've mm-hmm. only now started to work with some luxury brands mm-hmm. in the fashion space. And I'm very grateful for all of the brands that I work with. And what I've realized is, and I say this all the time, I'm like, utilize me to recommend other creators to you. Mm -hmm. If you like my content, I know 10 other non-binary people of color Mm -hmm. that would kill it in the fashion game, especially in luxury. So that's something that I always try and encourage brands. And when I consult at the end of a campaign or at the end of a project, I always just drop in five creators and I'm like, listen, if you ever want to work with creators, here's five that I really love. Right. Because we can't gatekeep those opportunities. Yeah. I think there is um, an amazing creator, Eric mm-hmm. Sedeno, who is Rico, I think oh, is nice. his mm-hmm. um, like at. Right. And he said everyone deserves their flowers. And I think that's so important. It's true. Like mm-hmm. especially people of color, queer people. I always tell people that what goes around comes around. If mm-hmm. you put out that positive energy, it will come through. And never underestimate the value of your network. I'm telling you, Literally. go to the events, meet the people at the brands. Literally. It's tiring, but it is worth it. Like yeah. I'm especially for luxury, you have to show up. Yeah. You have to show up when you can. Especially. You're like if I'm at Killian, I'm I'm still gonna go. Uh, for <laughs> I'm telling you, that's the thing is that and I always want to foster the relationship more. Yeah. And you know, I think I want to show brands that I might not necessarily be the the person or the box that they thought of. You know, I show up to these French luxury houses and I go on brand trips with French brands and I speak fluent French and I impress a lot of the global team, but I spoke French growing up. So it's not remarkable to me, but it may be to them. And I think it's important to show that. Yeah, that's so important. So how do you navigate these spaces when you do go to the events? And, you know, sometimes you might go to an event and you might feel out of place, right? Because Mm. the guest list, or like you're literally out of place. Like you're the yeah. only literally. person yeah. that looks like and you you're like, and you're there. And it takes a lot of confidence to show up because sometimes it does. you're like, okay, it I need does. to have the perfect fit. And, uh, and then you hundred percent. And, and I have a I have a wonderful team. Like I have a robust team, but I don't have a stylist. And I don't have a makeup. I, I do all my makeup. I mean, I show up and I see people who have stylists, who have PR, who do all these things. Right. The first thing that I do is find another person of color. Right. <laughs> Honestly, like find like, another person best. that I can be like, like truly, like when I see other, especially I owe so much of my career to black women and women of color. Like they've always been Persian women, like have been my biggest advocates ever since that I've started. And especially just with the industry itself, mm-hmm. the level of impact that black women and women of color have on the industry is profound and prolific. And so like for me, it's interesting because I'm, I, I always... I've always found solidarity and support with queer people, but especially with women of color. I just, I've, I'm so grateful to have so many wonderful women of color in my life. So when I go to events and I see a friend or I'm texting someone before, that's what I'm saying. (laughs) Like, it's really like finding the people that you're comfortable with. One is the first thing that I do. And then I will very like boldly now force myself to always show up in front of the brand, say hello to the people that work at the brand or the agency to make sure that my face is shown. Right. I'm not just invited. I'm going to go and make actually sure make seen. sure that I'm seen. And then also, best piece of advice, you guys, no one is thinking about you as much as you're thinking about yourself. <laughs> it's, I promise you, like, no, everybody, because everybody like, is thinking about themselves. Right. We're all doing, like, we're all doing it. So that means we're not thinking about the other person. Right. So it's, you may just be thinking about it more than you think other people are thinking right. about it. Does that make sense? Like no, it's it just does. not like that helps me at events. You're freaking when, out. You have in this whole in- Oh my God, I was breakdown. in Paris in Fashion Week and I was I went with YSL Beauty and it was amazing. It was such a goal of mine. It was such a dream. Mm-hmm. And I was at this party. It was all these people that I was like, oh my God. But then I was like, first of all, again, going back to I deserve to be here. I was right. invited here. And then two, like everybody here is thinking about themselves right. and how they look. So like they're not worried about me. Right. They're not worried about me, babes. Right. They're not. I love that. So just just go in with confidence. Go in with confidence and realize that y- what you think other people may be thinking about you could just be 
you overanalyzing the situation. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some Because sometimes I've been in spaces where I'm like, it's not the most comfortable. Or, you know, the people mightn't be as warm, but I'm just like, you have to remind yourself. And I, I feel like almost as an affirmation, like I deserve to be here. I was invited here. And? So, and even if you don't know who I am, I know who I, know I, I am. <laughs> and honestly, this is probably the thing I should have said first. This is a job. This is a business. Yeah. You're there for work. At the same time, the, in the times where I, I'm at an event and I don't know anyone there or I don't love the people there, whatever it is, whatever it is, this is a job. Right. This is, I'm on the clock right now. Treat it as a job because yeah. it is, but also treat it as something serious. Take yourself seriously in those situations because nobody else is going to do that for you. And at the end of the day, I, you know, when I'm at events where I'm with people who might not be the friendliest, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to work and I'm here to impress the brand. And that's what I have to do. I mean, I really think about it strategically, you know, <laughs> because everybody else is. Exactly. And especially if you don't need or, or want to mingle with other creators or people. Okay. That's take fine. your job seriously then. Yeah. Do it. That's fine. Yeah. So there is always this pressure to show up, right? You know, to shoot, yeah. to be consistent. But we, we always, we just don't have it sometimes. No, we just don't have it. Like, yeah. what do you do when you're just not feeling it? Like, either it's burnout or you just like low energy. Like, how do you push through those times? As a creator, what changed my perspective and helped me tremendously with burnout was batch content. Y'all, I filmed like 15 to 20 videos on Sunday. And I just batch that throughout the next 10 days because those 10 days, I can relax a little bit. Right. Like Sunday's hectic for me, right? But, or sometimes it's not a Sunday. Sometimes on Tuesday, if I have a free day, I film as much as I can so that on the days where I don't feel good, right. I don't have to make a video. Right. I can just post something that I already have saved. And right. that way I'm posting consistently, which always helps with the algorithm. But I'm not expensing any emotional labor for it. Right. Like I'm like, I already did this. Right. I'm gonna post this. No one knows the difference. No and one I can knows. and I can relax today. I don't yeah. have to do anything. So you're looking out for your future. So yeah, because I don't like to film when I'm not and it's also inauthentic. I don't want to film videos when I'm not feeling great. Like sometimes I'll do my makeup. I had a little glass of champagne. I'm going you're to an like, event. Oh, I look and I'm like, I look, I I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna the video. And then in those moments, I bang out like eight videos. And I'm like, this is when I feel good. I filmed right. this. So I'm gonna post this when I filmed it because I felt good when I did. Yeah. You know, that has helped me a lot. Right. I love that. Yeah. So, you know, I want to take it back real quick because, yeah. you know, you worked as a consultant and mm -hmm. you, we so, you spoke about, you know, taking yourself seriously. This is a business. Yeah. Since you worked on the consult side um, as longer than you've been a creator, yeah. what would be some of the things you would tell a creator to start doing? to take themselves more like a business. Like, yeah, you create content, you went viral. That's great, mm -hmm. but you should be doing. 100%. The first thing that I always like to say and preface is that I, I find the difference between a creator and influencer very important, right? Mm -hmm. A creator is anyone who creates content. Mm -hmm. You can have 4 million followers on TikTok, but you could do very few brand campaigns or land any sort of partnerships right. because it could be a variety of reasons. You don't want to. Right. Uh, you are not brand friendly, meaning um, there's a variety of reasons why brands not, might not work, work with you. Maybe your your content is a little bit volatile. You swear a lot. There's so many different things. So another piece of advice in there is, you know, like ask other creators who do a lot of brands how they've gotten to that point. Mm -hmm. um, so then, but then an influencer does it as a job, right? We we work with brands, we do partnerships, and we influence people to purchase products, right? We're we're creative advertisers in a sort of sense. So on the other side of the industry, what I learned was a lot of do's and don'ts. And with the brands that I work with, um, you know, I whether it was I worked in alcohol and spirits, and I learned about the things that you can and can't say when you're talking about alcohol. Mm -hmm. Those little things can, you know, prevent a creator who shows up to an alcohol event and let's say uses language like going to get hammered and then and tags the brand and the brand isn't going to want to work with a creator that does that. Right. So I would say like learn about the industry that it is that you want to work in mm -hmm. and look to the people who are successful and see what they're doing. Right. Not that you have to copy what they're doing, but see right. what they're doing successfully. Like I post consistently mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. I tag the brands that I work with on my Instagram stories. I always tag products and brands. I also link to those, you know, products. I'm a firm believer that creators sh should and need to get paid and compensated for their work. Alongside that, I also realized that for a lot of the brands 
that want to work with you or that you want to work with, they need to see that you're interacting with their product and that you're actually a brand fan. So, you know, when I purchase product and I post it, I'm not being paid to post it all the time. Right. It's a product that I love to do. And strategically, I also know that the brand seeing me use the product, they right. may think of me for their next campaign and be like, oh, Sirius was just using the cleanser. We're launching a new formula. Right. There we go. Yeah. So I always say work smarter. Yeah. You don't have to work harder. Work right. smarter. Yeah. I agree because I tell people like you can't work with every single brand. No, it's not. And then that's not authentic. Like, I, like uh, every we say no. We say no to brands you're that like, we don't want. You that's like what that? I'm saying. You can't. So it's you just can. like you have to choose. I always say start with maybe like 10 and like focus on that 10. Focus on those then, 10. Yeah. And then also I would say, especially if you're an up and coming creator, um, save and invest your money. Like it's uh, the best piece of advice that I got was understanding financial literacy. Um, I know this sounds nuts and bolts, but create your LLC or your S corp, protect your business, yes. protect your domain, purchase your domain, do everything that you can hire an attorney. If you can afford one hundred percent, I have the most wonderful attorney. I have the most wonderful team. And then when it comes to your team, be very strategic when it comes to hiring a manager or an agent. I mean, I met with so many management companies before I said yes um, and I said, I'd rather do this alone than do it with someone that I feel like is taking advantage of me. Of mm -hmm. course you will learn, but like, there's a lot of people that even with managers are not getting paid and compensated what they're worth. And I mm -hmm. think that's what managers take advantage of people. What do you think is a red flag to look out for when, you know, you've, you've, you're talking to a lot of agencies, like, and they might just be like, you are going to make so much money. And they like lay out a bed of roses because you're, you know, when it's I, not really going to be. Like no. That. And also it's like, first thing that I look at is I look at their other talent. I'm like, do I respect these creators? Like, do I like these creators? Do I want to do the campaigns these creators do? Also, something that was important to me was my manager, one of the many reasons why I adore her to the moon is because she's never forced me to do a partnership, no matter how big it was, no matter how much money was involved, if I didn't feel comfortable or if it didn't align with who I was as a person. Right. A lot of other management companies that I talked to and spoke to gave off the energy that we're going to just make you the most amount of money as much as as much and as quickly as we can. And I'm like, listen, I'm not worried about the strength and length of my business. I'm worried about having people on my team that support me right. in every situation. Exactly. And also look at the fine print. For example, there was one management company that reached out and in their terms, in their contract was that, let's say I worked with them for a year, uh -huh. right? And then let's say I, I ended my contract. In the contract, it said that whatever brands I worked with in that year with them, they would in perpetuity take their percent moving forward. So in three years, if I work with the same brand I worked with, with that management company and they no longer represented me, they would still take the percent. That so read so the predatory. fine print, uh, hire an attorney hourly or someone who can look at a contract and make sure, yeah, I'm so thankful I didn't go with that management right. company, but that's how they get you. Right. They really do. And that, and the thing is, is that they don't say those things up front, but when the contract is sent, you're like, oh, we already discussed everything and you sign. And Never then sign it. Don't yeah. just sign. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Same thing with taking jobs as a creative. Like you have to look at the contract. I, I, I always joke. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm thankful for my whole team. I have a, I have a very unique sense of thankfulness for my attorney and for my lawyer, yeah. who is the one who does all my contracts because she's able to vet so many opportunities that right. people might miss. And people, I see creators miss all the time. Right. Listen, create a Protect life. your business. Protect your business. Because you are a business. Coin. It's true. Yeah, a hundred percent. This industry is very fickle. It is. You never know what's going to happen. Um. Okay, so let's get into some faves of yours. <sighs> what have you been loving makeup wise? Makeup wise? Makeup wise, okay, there's a few products that I've really gotten into that I love. Um, I am adoring the YSL Beauty new skin tint. Uh, I've used it in every one of my. I'm it's the best. Isn't it? How's the shade range? Because I'm not 100 percent sure so on it. I think they. I mean, could always be better. I am I'm always just, a. Um, I'm always like we can always go down. Al well, I'm, like, I'm number 17. Um, but it's a skin tint, so it's a little bit adaptable. It's good. It yeah, works, you love. But um. I do love it. And you know what? They just came out with the concealers. It's amazing. I, I love them. Yeah. I haven't I haven't tried it. The box is so I know. No, YSL Beauty. Honestly, there's very them. few things from YSL Beauty that I don't not love. I Thank love, you. I'm really into um 
a bunch of new lip products. I've been testing out. The Clinique has a new lip product. It's mm, like a stick that? that just brings out the natural color of your lips. Ooh. I'll sh- literally have it in my bag. Okay, and it's cheap. Um, I love the Patrick Ta blushes. I Let's adore see. my Matte Cosmetics finishing spray. Which one? I Fix use Plus? Fix Plus. Just I'm also it's using kind of like melts everything. Amazing. In. And the two other brands that I cannot get over because they're the type of brands that I could use everything from. One, Laura Mercier has mm-hmm. products that I. Oh, can you say that again? Laura Mercier. <laughs> <laughs> they truly have so, like their mascara. I've been loving, and I am telling you, Hourglass, Hourglass. You know, I don't have much from Hourglass. Uh, I'll be so I honest. didn't until I'll like six so months. Honest. Hourglass concealer. A lot of people have been talking about that yeah, on my I, feed. I, I've probably seen I'm it like telling three you, times this week. There are three concealers that I use, y'all. I'm very picky about concealer. Uh, the Milk Makeup Future Fluid, I love YSL Beauty, the yes. Touche Clad, I love. Hourglass, nine times out of ten, I'm reaching for that concealer, you the Vanish concealer. You need to try the Lancome Tonti Oh, I lo- oh Lancome too. Obs- yes. I'm having such a kick with their um with their skincare too. Yes. So for me, and then what else? Okay, a couple other makeup brands that I really love. Um, KJH Beauty is amazing. Their Boo. highlighter, Katie's highlighter, is so Boo. good. Um, and then also Ciel Cosmetics. Uh-huh. Um, founded by Nikki, makeup artist. She's incredible. They have an incredible sort of like serum foundation mm-hmm. that I love that I've been using. I haven't tried that. It's so good. Um, their brushes are amazing. They just sent oh, those really? to me today. And I, I love that. I'm I, a brush. I have so many. Like, oh, no. Uh, brushes. And for yeah. anybody who's sort of like dealing with any hyperpigmentation or color correction, the Live Tinted Hue Sticks are my go-to. In the shade Rise, mm-hmm. Deepika smashed I literally product. just use that in a video. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> it's really good. I buff it out with a brush. Yeah. I try not to apply it directly. But I use it as blush too. I use it as blush too. Yeah. use it at everything. And I, lo- I will say, I've been loving the Party Pots from Glossier, the holiday collection. Oh, yes, they have the most yet. gorgeous one. It's the shade Click. It's pink. I've posted a couple of videos and every time I've worn it, I've gotten comments about it. So really? that's the one. Ooh, I l- okay. I'm excited. All right. What about skincare? Skincare, you know what? So I am really excited. I have a dermatologist appointment because I feel like, you know, I'm not an esthetician. I'm not a dermatologist. I know it works for my skin. But a few things that I've been loving recently… I switched over from retinol to resveratrol. Mm-hmm. And it's because it's a lot less invasive for people with sensitive skin. It's mm-hmm. pregnancy safe. And Kodali launched mm-hmm. a, an amazing resveratrol serum, which I've been really? loving. I I went crazy at the pharmacy in Paris. So oh, I'm like... telling you. So they have an SPF that's in France mm-hmm. that I always stock up on when I go there. It's so good. Them and Bioderma. Like Bioderma. I just uh. bought the... It makes your skin look so Have you good. used their Misceral water too? It's amazing. Wait, who? Bioderma? Yeah. They oh, have yeah, a Misceral water. It's amazing. Oh, absolutely. Love it. That's like a makeup artist staple actually. So usually my routine is in the morning I use cold water and SPF all day. Mm-hmm. Like I really don't do a lot in the morning. At night, I'll either like do a double cleanse if I have makeup. I love the Garnier Missile. Like it's so right. good for yes. me. Um, or the Elemis like gentle cleansing balm that I take off. And then I try and use like a resveratrol, do a mask. I mean, I am obsessed with all things Shiseido and La Mer. I am a luxury girl when it comes to those. Pro- but it's because of yes. like the the specific products that I love. Um, and recently, I've also really been into, um, y'all, MAC has their Hyper Real product, yeah. which is really good. It's a skin canvas balm. It's amazing for prepping. I love the prepping. too. And that… The serum and is nice. That, the three like moisturizers I prep my skin for before makeup are that one. The Skin Fix Triple Lipid Moisturizer is mm-hmm. amazing with the Drunk Elephant Drops. Really? That I combination. Fix, but I never did the Drunk Elephant oh, Mix. Mixed together. And because then Charlotte Tilbury Magic So it's like good. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I use Charlotte Tilbury in my kit. But even the… So I've been actually using the Skin Fix. They have a… um eczema face balm. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. my gosh. And I use it as a glossy it eye. Oh. Uh, it's so cool. Speaking of eyes, a hack that I learned, I think Charlotte from Adieu Skin, uh-huh. one of the co-founders taught me this. Um, she was like, you know, with Aquaphor, mm-hmm. you know how you like use a setting powder um, to bake under the eyes mm-hmm. for your concealer to bake in your concealer or to set your mm-hmm. concealer? Use Aquaphor to set or bake in your eye cream. So what I'll do is I'll put on and apply my eye cream. Let's say it's like Shiseido Benefiance or I love the Kiehl's Avocado Eye Cream. Mm -hmm. I wait 10, 15 minutes. And then once it's set, I take a little bit of Aquaphor and I just put it in because it really helps lock in the hydration that you're putting under your eye. 
Oh, a hundred percent. And it's try it. because it also, I'll wake up and my under eyes are dewy and hydrated. Ooh. And at night, especially with a fan, right. AC, I'm telling you, it is such a great hack. I love, nice it. I love it. I love it. Especially when it gets cold, according to where you're, you know, where you're I know. Is. Yeah. So that's what I'm loving recently. I mean, I there's so much that. more, but those are like what come to mind. Uh, I love this. Okay. So what are you looking forward to? For 2024. It doesn't have to be work-related. Just what are you looking forward to? I feel like you're doing all the things. Honestly, so- I'm continuing to prioritize joy. I've yeah. I've found like there's so much of me as a creator. Your expression is up for public opinion. Right. So my expression and the way that I express, that's up to you. Mm-hmm. That's not, It's out of my control. But the personal parts of me that I'm learning about, Mm -hmm. that's my own peace. That's my own joy. Like I can protect that. And I think I'm looking forward to continuing to set that boundary. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to some very exciting projects in 2024. I know every, I feel like every influencer says that. They're like, you know, secret project. The secret project, like loading. (laughs) No, but like truly, I think one of my dream projects that I've worked on is coming out soon. And also, um, I'm looking forward to seeing like where the influencer industry will go. I I think, you know, I th- I think about this with you. You have such a profoundly strong career that longevity is something that, you know, is what you do and I think is what is what my focus is and I and I really, you know, my dad always told me when I started to do this, he was like, did you get promoted every day when you were in your corporate job? No. Exactly. Do you win a gold medal every day? No. So I'm honestly just looking forward to like seeing how the time plays out. Yeah. Because I've always tried to get ahead of it and that's never served me. Yeah. Because we're so accustomed, some people are so accustomed to like going viral. Now, going viral immediate gratification. Like, yeah. And it's just like slow and steady. Yeah. The art it's of not going viral. Ways. Don't set expectations for yourself that are un- unreal. Like yeah. it's just, it's not normal to go viral every day. It's yeah. just not, you know. Yeah. I want to, I just want to go back because I wanted to ask you something. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, What fragrances are you loving right now? Okay. I love this question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wait. I just sounded like the um, the tick. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, mean, I really lo- okay. Fragrances. I have a bunch right now. Uh, Good Girl Gone Bad. Killian is a go-to. Do you have Blue Moon from Killian? No, no. I need to try. Do you have Flowers of Immortality? No, I've tried Smoking Hot. Like yes. right now, I've been. But I will say, so with Killian, loving Glossier. You, I wear that all the time. Why sell Libre and myself yes. are amazing. I love the the. I don't know if it's new. The Carolina Herrera Good Girl fragrance is yes. amazing. That's good. YSL, their J'adore Parfum d'eau is like a mm-hmm. water based mm-hmm. that I use a lot. And then, I mean, I love Maison Francis Kirk Dijon oh. Baccarat Rouge, baby. But. Yeah. Oh, we were going to say, say the dupe? No, oh. I was going to say the dupe. I was going to say I'm a go- uh, gentle fluidity girl. Uh, okay. Yeah. Love gentle fluidity. I also have that for a dupe because listen, it's an expensive. Yeah. It's, an, it's a it's pricey nice perfume. Yeah. But if I'm just running out the house and I'm not going to spray for a special occasion, Sol de Janeiro has one. I have to send is it to it, you. Which, uh, what is uh, one? It's literally, it's the, y'all, it is, is it the, $36. The, the, it's uh, pink. It has the pink jasmine. It's like oh, the, I don't, I don't know, know what it's called, but we'll have to link we'll it. Put it. Yeah. It's the same. It's amazing. Have so I use that. Beyonce's perfume? No. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> bag. I'm going to put some on you so you can smell what it smells. It's... Is it new? Yeah. Oh. I mean, I ordered it in August and I just got it like no. last week. Well, it was everybody pre-order. Says, everybody says the Ariana Grande perfumes are also really nice. I have to try them. The red yeah. Ones. I only have the pink um, cloud. So those are my fragrances. The only other thing that I've been testing out, I'm trying to think because I can literally visualize my countertop right now. Mine is they have so many fragrances. Nordstrom. <laughs> oh, I Mini love. Alpha. I mean, I use a, also a lot of diffusers. Mm-hmm. Like with Deep Chic and Lalabo, I have so many candles around my apartment. I love candles. Like I'm a feu de bois There's and a bear girly. own candle company that I love. It's called Sensual Ooh. Candle Co. Ooh, they had a collaboration okay. with Ola Henriksen in 2020. Oh, yes. I'm familiar with this. And I have been buying from them since then. And oh. I just ordered maybe like 10 candles. Will you send me the link? Yes, I will. I love okay. them. I love them. Um, Well, this was so much fun. Thank you for Please tell your new friends how to find you, all the things. Yes, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube. Snapchat. I'm on Snapchat, girl. I'm trying. I feel very Gen Z when I'm on Snapchat. Um, at Sirius Vasey, C-Y-R-U-S-V-E-Y-S-S-I. And my DMs are always open. I love that. 